Now before we go on to setting up the camera exposure times and illumination settings and our entire experiment, the first thing I'd like to do is set up the four fluorescence channels that I'm going to utilize for this training. To begin, we've got our channel 1 here currently set with a GFP cube. So the cube's assigned simply by having the channel selected and clicking on the cube you'd like assigned. So with our GFP cubed, I'd like to also change this lookup table so that the green pseudo color is used instead. To do that, I simply double click within this color bar here. And I'm going to pull up an image I've got that will show you. And you'll get this dialog here where you can double click on the color you'd like to choose for that channel. Minimize that. So for me, I'm going to go ahead and change that to green. Now we can also type in a name of our probe or protein, whatever is most useful. Since the metadata will also include the cube name, it might be redundant to say GFP here. So instead I'm going to type in tubulin. For this channel. And equally, if you right click within a channel, let me pull up my right click image. You can get a menu as well. If you right click on the channel and you go down to properties, which I'm going to do here, you can actually pull up a list of dyes, which is a really useful way to tell the computer exactly what it is that you're doing. So with the dye list, you can select exactly what your probe is, and this will take some information with it. For example, with deconvolution, we need our emission wavelength. By assigning the correct die, we won't have to program that in later. It'll already know. So I'm going to quickly do that and hit OK. Great. So now I have one channel set up, pseudo colored in green, assigned to our GFP cube, labeled it tubulin, and actually utilized our Lexaflor 488 to show the software exactly what's going on with the wavelengths of light. Now moving over here, we've got a plus and a minus. I can hit plus to add an additional channel. And now, with this channel selected, I'd like to make it my Psi3 channel. By clicking on the Psi3 cube, now I've assigned it to this particular channel. And again, I can double click my pseudo coloring, change that red, and type in my protein here. Right click, go to properties, and select like a Psi 3 for this particular one. Sorry, you can't see that. Great, so now I've got two channels set up. I would like to add my Psi 5 as well. So going Psi 5 into a magenta color, my protein will be A, B, C, X. Right click properties, and we'll add Psi 5 to pull all that emission wavelength information in. And last but not least, the ever-popular DAPI channel. DAPI itself is a nice and bright one, so most folks are using it. We've got a PKA labeled here with DAPI. Right-click properties, and let's see, where is DAPI? There we go. Awesome. So now I've got four fluorescence channels set up. Each of these can be customized with different exposure times and illumination settings. If you prefer to do your DAPI first, you can simply select that cube, click on it, drag it to the position you'd like, and it'll reassign the order, keeping all the information consistent. I always prefer to do DAPI last, however, since the UV light used to excite DAPI can also excite other fluorophores. It also can photoconvert fluorophores or aid in bleaching of fluorophores, so we were always taught in my lab to image DAPI last. Once you have all of these set, it's very easy to save them. So you can save these current settings and quickly pull them back up the next day you sit down with the same sample and have a much faster starting point.